Um, Gwyn Creedy, Word Journey author. Stories have words, and words, if they're good ones, have stories. This is my sister Claire at an exhibit of her photography. If I had to think of words to describe Claire, I'd say poet, photographer, rebel, fearless, and wanderer. It was Claire's unexpected death 12 years ago that thrust me into the journey to become a writer. Death is the ultimate motivator, and Claire's death made me see that no tomorrows are ever guaranteed. Within a month of her passing, I asked for a better job at work, made plans for the first ever overseas trip for my family, and to honor my sister's artistic spirit, decided to try my hand at writing a novel. I harbored no practical dream to become a writer, except in the way one thinks they'd like to be a rock star or a movie star or a millionaire. This is the book I had fallen in love with just before Claire's death. I decided to try to write a romance like this one. The heroine of Outlander, coincidentally, is named Claire Beauchamp. This is the first sentence I ever wrote. Not great, I wrote in private, even my husband didn't know. Deciding to become a writer is one of the scariest things you can do. It sets you up for a huge potential failure, which is very intimidating. Nourish the writers you know. Teach them that failing is really learning to succeed. <clears throat> Romance novels are a punchline in the literary world, though they represent, by far, the largest segment of fiction sold. <laughs> My theory is that's because romance novels are written by women for women. Mysteries also represent genre writing, but are written for the most part by men. Do you hold mysteries in higher regard? Among Americans who read, one in five read romances. Um, when I finished my manuscript, I sent it to every agent I could find. This is the phone message that um, one left when I was out of town for the weekend, and this is the message my husband took. Um, she loved the book and wanted to represent it. This was six years after Claire died. Um, do you like rejection? Then become a writer. This is one in a long series of rejection letters um, my agent and I received. After a year, Claudia, my agent, suggested I write a second book so she could try to sell that instead. I reminded her the first book took six years. She laughed. You writers are so dedicated. <clears throat> So I wrote a different sort of love story, funnier, not historical, and this time with time travel, and it sold. In fact, Simon & Schuster wanted a second book as well. Claudia left a message on my voicemail on my cell phone, which I'd left recharging in the car. I got it the next morning. Um, as soon as the book sold, I, write, I wrote to two of my favorite authors asking for a blurb. Diana Gavaldon never wrote back. Janet Ivanovich not only agreed to give me a blurb, but she actually, she actually emailed me herself to say so. I'd ambushed her at a signing in Pittsburgh a year earlier and asked if she'd consider it if my book ever sold. Nice lady. I also asked Colin Firth for a blurb. You'd, you'd have to read the book, but he plays a part in it. What can I say? Women of a certain age have a thing for Colin. Sadly, he turned me down. Well, to be fair, his agent turned me down. I'm fairly certain Colin never saw the request. But in any case, it was fun to find this in my inbox one day. <laughs> A copy editor is a writer's best friend, mine is kick ass. The sticky, the second one on the upper right, is, is um, mine sketching out a scrabble board to confirm the turns I had my characters taking, conform to correct rules, and scoring. When one character ordered wings from the quiet storm here in Pittsburgh, she found the restaurant's menu online and advised me that wings are not found on it. <laughs> As a new author, you learn where the lines of power are drawn. I had almost unlimited power to write my story and choose the plot of my book. I had almost no power in choosing the cover or the title. <laughs> contract was signed, a hefty 18-page document, though not until after I'd finished editing the first book and writing the outline for the second. Nothing moves very quickly in publishing. Please note they, um, they pretended to use the title I wanted, Unbuckled, until um, after the, the contract was signed. 
Um, the font in my books, Heffler Text, is a contemporary serif Antiqua font designed by Jonathan Heffler in 1991. Heffler Text allows the use of automatic ligatures, old style figures, and my favorite swashes. Heffler Text is also used in the Wikipedia logo. Gigas, baubles, ujas. Now there's a great word from a Dorothy L. Sayers novel. I consider dingbats to be the jewelry words wear, or at least chapters. These are the dingbats my art designer created for my books. I love them. And see the little Heffler swash on the P in chapter? As you can see, I, I collect interesting words. Um, withhold has a double H. Um, Chilenk is a diamond battle decoration of the Ottoman Empire that comes from the word for spray of flowers. Seer means dry or withered. Too many hard words makes a book feel belabored. One or two, like a sprinkle of sea salt, adds flavor. <laughs> two great words are your name on the cover of a book. <laughs> This is the photo my husband sent to me of my book's first public sighting. Mike Freeman, the guy who owns my video store, is on the right. He's known me for years, though not as a writer. When he spotted my book in his wife's bag, he said, wow, another person named Gwyn Creedy. Who knew? <laughs> associated with being a published writer, critical praise, heartfelt thanks from readers, the total printed on a royalty check, though in that case I'm going to have to agree with Robert Palmer, she's so fine, there's no telling where the money went. Um, of course, not everyone is going to love you. What can I say? She's from Texas. But it came out a mere 11 years after Claire died. It's set in Pittsburgh with a Pittsburgh heroine, all my books are. I like the pink, I like the blurb, I like the boots, I could do without the chest. Um, but the best words of all are the dedication I finally got to write, the words at the end of a journey. <laughs>